Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to Food and Wine Festival. It started yesterday, this is day two of the festival. We won't be here very long. We've only got about an hour and a half here at the park before we go back to our resort at Margaritaville. So we are going to be hitting up a couple of rides and stopping at a couple of booths. Not a ton of them this time around, but I figured I would still take you with me even though Epcot is going to be a short trip today. flavor thick and the coconut is really yummy as well if you like guava you're gonna really like this because this is so good how's your bowl want to look at it from Hawaii can I have a bite mm. that's good is that the spam bowl Whatever it is, I'll insert it here. Yummy, good, full flavor. We gotta get out of the rain. We made it over to McAtizer's. It started raining again, but we're gonna get the traditional mac and cheese for Lennon, so I guess I can give an update on that. But I still wanna find something else for myself. But we are pressed for time. It's 1.31 and I think we're looking to be out of here by two. All right, so we have the cheesesteak mac and cheese with shave bell peppers, onions, and breadcrumbs, and then we've got the traditional, which is just with the panko crumbs, which this did end up being allergy friendly for Lennon, so that works out really well. All right, I got everything in one bite. Do you wanna use the fork? It's good. The beef is a little dry, but I like the crunch of the breadcrumbs. And the pepper does give it a lot of flavor, but oh, yeah, it's hot. the beef is so dry. Maybe we need a I don't love it, let go, let go. and I'm sure that the traditional is probably fine. This is okay. I give this like a six out of ten. Right, we are going back to the booth that has the I think it's like the apple cider type of booth. It has the bison and the pork tenderloin. I've heard both of those are really good, so we're gonna try both of those. But they're gonna stay in there stay out of the rain I'm gonna be the one to venture out and go grab those it is a very rainy afternoon rain was not on the forecast which is a little annoying so we kind of just been hit with it but that's all right we figure we're gonna down this food as fast as we can as fast as a toddler can and then go on figment and Nemo and then head over to our resort because we're staying at Margaritaville with my family. I think the booth is right up here. I can see it in the distance. Hopefully it's not too long of a line. All right, so we have the pork tenderloin here. I'll post what is all in it. And then we have the bison as well. Both look really good. The pork tenderloin and the bison just work for me. I liked the butternut squash puree that came with the bison. That was really flavorful and yummy everything else I just feel like it didn't go together cohesively and the pork tenderloin I found to be dry and I kind of flavorless like I just didn't really think it was worth the money um but maybe I just got a bad batch it could also be that I'm not a big pork tenderloin and bison eater so it's not something that I necessarily would gravitate towards last quick review is for the Margaritaville cottages in Orlando, specifically the cottages. We have never stayed in the hotel rooms. This is our second year staying in the Margaritaville cottages and both times I've had the same experience where I feel like it's a good price if you have a large group and you want to be in the same vicinity. If you're going to have a bunch of family go on a trip to Orlando, 
and you don't want to just be in separate hotel rooms and you want to be able to interact at all times, something like a Margaritaville cottage is going to be really nice. It has a room and a bathroom for everyone. You can have an add-on to where you have your own private pool and jacuzzi. It has an upstairs downstairs uh, situation. Some of them are three stories, so it can be quiet if you want to get up to the top. They've got balconies. Uh, the appliances and the fixins and stuff are uh, pretty new because this, I believe Margaritaville opened in 2020. So, or maybe 2019, I don't know. It was not that long ago. So everything looks new, everything looks polished enough um, to where I do think that it's nice. But it's very nice in a general sense because if you start to squint your eyes and look at the specifics of the cottages, it does leave a bad taste in your mouth I found there to be a lot of mold in our bathroom shower. Um, the floors were pretty dirty. The bottoms of the kids' feet were like disgusting. I couldn't even bear it. And we were looking for a broom so that we could sweep the floors ourselves, but didn't find anything. Um, it was just the cleaning. It wasn't a very clean cottage. And this was what I remember happening the first time that we went last year. Uh, it looked very nice. It just wasn't very well taken care of. This time around, we also had uh, the our own pool and jacuzzi, which we did not have last year, and our jacuzzi was broken. The heating worked, but the bubbles and the jets didn't, which did disappoint a large uh, majority of our family members that went on the vacation. They were very excited to be in the jacuzzi and to find out that it was broken. Sucked. Um, we did call maintenance and they said, oh, we'll come out and fix it. They came out and said they fixed it and it wasn't fixed. We called them again and they were like, we fixed it. Came out again and said, oh, it's broken. It's not going to work for the trip. So that was really disappointing. Um, and on our checkout day, they were actually draining the jacuzzi, I think, trying to find out what was wrong with it. So that sucked for a lot of my family members. But if you look past all of that, I do think that it is a decent enough place to stay. I just think that if you have a smaller group slash you have a larger group or group in general and you don't really care to spend all of your time together, maybe don't do a cottage. Maybe do stay on site on property if you're stay, if you're going to be at one of the resorts. Like if you're going to be at Disney, if you're going to be at Universal, maybe stay on property um, or go to another uh, hotel that's nicer in quality because I just don't think that this one is necessarily worth it unless you are a group that wants to spend all of your time together. Now we have to get ready because it's 319. I thought that my family wanted to be <gasps> at Disney at four, but they're not even here. They're at the store. So we're going to be a little bit late, but that's okay. <laughs> but we got to get dressed to get ready to go. So I will talk to you when we are all in our stuff. We did get one of the exclusive flatbreads. It's supposed to have, I think, a basil pesto, meatball, it's supposed to have a little bit of spice as well. Consensus on the flat bread is that it is good, but it is hot. Because it has the chili flakes on it, it sneaks up on you a little bit more than like a usual Disney spice. Josh, who is not good with spice, is struggling. I think it's like, it's good. I think it's fine, but it is spicy. So that is something to keep in mind. If you think that the like, chili flakes are spicy.
all right, I'm home now, and I figured I would give you a little bit of an outro because I didn't do that um, while I was in Orlando. So Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, in my opinion, is always worth it. Unless you know it's going to be a very busy night, like let's say Halloween night, I think that Not-So-Scary is such a great way to be able to experience Magic Kingdom at a low crowd level at night where the weather isn't blazing hot. You walk on to practically every ride. I think that this is a good uh, event for you if you have a family that is more ride focused and you can't make a bunch of trips out to Disney. You really just want to do a one and done kind of scenario. I think that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is perfect for you because you have in, from 4 p.m. until midnight to essentially experience everything. Now, keep in mind that the event doesn't even start until 7. When we got there, let's say, I think it was like 4.30 or 5, we had already gone on half of the rides by the time the event started at 7. The crowd levels prior to a Halloween party are going to be lower. People don't want to spend the money on a Magic Kingdom ticket if the park is just going to close at 6 o'clock for them. So not a lot of people are going to the park going to Magic Kingdom compared to the other parks. Keep in mind, we did have two littles with us, so we didn't do any of the big attractions like uh, Tiana's, we didn't do Tron, we didn't do, we didn't do Peter Pan's Flight, and we didn't do, I think those are the main ones. We did do Space Mountain, we did Thunder, we did Haunted Mansion, Small World, and like I said, most of these attractions we walked on to. Uh, I believe the biggest wait that we had was around 20 minutes, and that was for the for Space Mountain and the um, the cars, Tomorrowland. Name is escaping me. Oddly enough, that was like a 20 minute wait for the littles to go on that. But oh, uh, like the Barnstormer, we walked onto it twice. We did it, went right back in line, walked up, and did it again. So. I do think that it's worth it for the rides alone, especially when you think about the fact that when you are going to Magic Kingdom during normal operating hours, you're spending so much time in line for rides. And like I said, if rides are important to you, if they're important to your family, uh, I think that this is worth it. Obviously, there is a lot to experience in a Halloween event that is not uh, rides focus. There are a lot of character meet and greets. The character meet and greets have long, long lines. When we showed up to Not So Scary, like I said, around 4.30 or 5, the wait time to meet Jack and Sally was 50 minutes. And so that's not something that we were willing to do. Um, we actually didn't wait for any characters uh, because we just didn't prioritize that. However, very late into the event, I'm talking uh, like 11.30, there were very, very short waits for characters. Now, again, we didn't do the big characters that may have had longer lines, but for example, we met Pluto and walked right up. I believe we were the second family in line to see Pluto. There was no line to meet Ariel and Prince Eric right outside of their attraction. Um, we didn't meet them because we were on our way out, but we watched and there was only one person with them and they were just taking pictures of Ariel and Eric and not even interacting with them. So you could have, in theory, just walked right up and met them. We did see the Boo to You Parade, the 815 Boo to You Parade. Um, I wanted us to be right up in Frontierland, right where they first come out. We did manage to get a pretty decent spot. I will say I think if you want to get a spot right in the front of the rope for the event uh, for the parade you're probably going to have to show up like 30 45 minutes early in order to get that prime seating that you may want however I found that with us showing up god it was probably like 750 we got a pretty decent spot and we had a stroller as well. So it's not like we were just squeezing in. Uh, we had a stroller with us and managed to get a pretty decent spot where I wanted us to be. Like I said, we weren't in the very front, but I think we still managed to have a good time and enjoy the parade without being right in the front. And we still could see mostly everything. And if you put a kiddo on your shoulders in that type of situation, they're going to see everything for sure. So, um, we did manage to see the parade in this time and enjoyed it. We did not watch 
uh, the Hocus Pocus show. We did not watch the fireworks just because that wasn't something that we were prioritizing in this trip. Um, however, we did get some pretty great views of the fireworks in general just from Tomorrowland when we were waiting uh, for a couple of people in our party to finish up at Space Mountain and the cars. So while they were doing that, a couple of us were just sitting there in Tomorrowland watching the fireworks with no crowds. And honestly, it was totally fine. You could hear the music. Yeah, you weren't seeing the projection, projections on the castle, but still getting a great view of the fireworks themselves. So I still stand by the fact, though, that I think that you could go to an event like this and you could see the fireworks, see the Hocus Pocus show, see the parade, do the trick-or-treating, meet a couple of characters, and still manage to ride almost all of the attractions. We did plenty of trick-or-treating. We did the allergy exchange because my daughter has allergies. And this time around, they filled up her bag pretty generously. Last year when we went to the allergy center, they let us pick which candies we wanted. Um, they showed us our options essentially based on her allergies and told us, you know, which ones would you like. This time they just asked for her allergies, went in themselves and had me stand outside and filled up her entire bag and gave it back to us. A little different. I'm not mad about it because they did fill up the bag a lot more than they did last time around. But with that, that was, uh, the mini vlog, if you will, of our trip, our Labor Day vacation to Orlando. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!